Hi everyone, welcome back and Merry Christmas to you. I've got a couple of updates that I thought were worth sharing, some things I've progressed since the, the last video. And I also wanted to show you in this video the full range of motion that is capable from this particular six doff Stuart platform motion rig. All right, let's get started. So first off, um, as I was building and getting to understand a bit more thinking ahead about how the cockpit is going to be installed and positioned and things like that. So the, you know, the, the equipment that's going to sit on top of this, um, the top of this platform, the top assembly uh, for the motion for sim rig here. I realised that I'm going to require a little bit more depth in the centre because of my particular needs or, or want to use a centre mount joystick on an extension which will sit off the seat. And I know from my existing uh, gaming chair, pilot seat, whatever you want to call it, uh, the Monster Tech uh, seat, that by the time I've attached that, that it actually needs to go quite far below your seating position which of course will be the seating position will be this plus some aluminium extrusion profile whatever you want to call it uh, and then the seat on on top but there isn't an enormous amount of of, of depth uh, available if I just move the the camera down here for you you know the the distance between here the the top of the the base assembly if you like and the bottom of the of the top assembly. Um, in fact, if I can just reach my, my measure, I can have a look at it there. You know, we're looking at what, 12, 13 centimeters, or, you know, just, just over five inches uh, for our American friends. And um, which of course means that anything that goes below five inches below in the bottom of this base assembly here is going to hit the top cover of the of the base assembly uh, which would potentially be a problem or, or limit your choices so to add to that of course we have the power distribution unit here which sits you know probably three or four inches off the base assembly uh, the top of the base assembly anyway you know this this, this guy here sticks, you know, sticks out. So the last thing I want is my chair and my centre mounted joystick being in a position where it's anywhere near this because of the risk of the, you know, the motion rig coming down and, you know, basically crushing uh, this, uh, this power distribution unit or me having to live with a compromise solution of not using stick extensions and things like that or a, or a much uh, a much shorter one I want to use you know basically as long as I can I can get away with because of you know my particular desire to um, to use this rig for uh, for helicopter flight simulation first and foremost and then you know followed by jets and racing sims and uh, some space sims and, and things like that but um, but that of course led me to think well so I'm going to have to position this rig so that the the front of uh, the front is in the right position so that the seat is in the back position and therefore isn't likely to uh, there isn't likely to be um, uh, joysticks peripheral devices above that that are at risk of you know coming down on uh, on top of it. So um, that meant that uh, originally, if you'd seen my previous videos, I had the uh, the front position here and the servo motors orientated uh, accordingly. So from the, from the front position, uh, you're expected to go in a clockwise direction, one, motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four, motor five, motor six. Um, but of course, in that position, if this was the front, then this would be the back where the seat is, you know, the majority of the the weight I would suggest overhanging, you know, the this part of the top assembly, but then the joystick which would attach centre mount joystick attaching to that seat would be right here, and I can see that it's going to clip um, 
that power distribution unit. So what I've done is I've moved the front of my rig here which now means uh, I had to rewire things so that we've got uh, motor number one here, although that's the, the servo driver for the motor, motor number two there and the motor for uh, number two, number three, number four, number five and number six uh, here. And that's what dictates the order that they're plugged into the, uh, the controller board. Uh, down there, that's the motion for sim controller at the base of the unit there. So underneath that, that 3D printed cover is the you know the microcontroller. Um, these six go to the uh, servo motor drivers. This goes to the handheld controller, and uh, it's difficult to see, but there's a, a a micro USB plug there, which is what connects the the controller board to the PC. Uh, and receives all the uh, the telemetry information and, uh, and and things like that. So, yes, uh, that's why the covers are off uh, at the moment, and I, I've now um, moved the front position of the rig as as you see there to give space now here at the back, which is where I foresee the seat being on top of the aluminium profile, and then the front of the seat being here, and the joystick, the centre mounted joystick, being somewhere. Here. Uh, approximately there but there's you know the point is that there's plenty of room and it's got the maximum amount of depth um, there as opposed to anywhere near that power distribution unit all right so that's the first thing so after making all of those changes I then focus my attention on uh, learning how the controls work, motion simulation and things like that. Uh, and I ran into a problem, which is actually apparent on, on my last video. And uh, it didn't occur to me at the time, but uh, as I was using the system more, it became obvious to me that the I was getting disconnection issues between the the motion rig and my computer via the via the USB cable. And of course, your initial thoughts to that are, well, you know, has have you got an earthing fault? Are your connections good and clean? Have you tried to use too long of an extension lead and, and are losing the signal across the cable? So I spent a long time trying to troubleshoot and work out where the fault was lying. Because what was happening to me was the the motion platform was visible to the PC and the dashboard application but it was disconnecting approximately every 10 seconds and uh, yes then uh, when it was coming back online again it was causing the motion platform to move i think to a new park position and what you would see is the is the top rig the top part of the assembly basically lurched to to one side uh, until you got it back under control and started sending commands again so not not a particular issue in this state when you're testing things but of course you can't be having that when um you know you've got the cockpit on there and you know you've got people sitting on the uh, on the platform you you've got to have confidence that it's going to move and behave as in the way in which you want to so to cut a long story short uh, i've spent quite a bit of time talking to the motion for sim product owner and uh, he's been helping me troubleshoots uh, possible reasons and it, it's basically turned out to be the fact that I was using a version of the firmware and the dashboard that was causing these these dropouts so of course you you naturally want to use the latest firmware and yep basically uh, there were some problems with that firmware I mean there's bugs with all software right nothing's nothing's particularly perfect um, but something on my particular PC, whether it's because I was using an AMD system, uh, how the USB system was configured uh, in Windows or you know via the motherboard and, and things like that, I don't know. But it it bought this bug uh, out. But fortunately, the uh, the owner's been working on a new firmware and dashboard updates, and uh, which has actually been released uh, today. And um, 
Uh, to cut a long story short, that has fixed uh, my disconnection issue, so I'm really, uh, really pleased with that. Um, and that's allowed me to start testing more of the capabilities of the rig, which is what I want to show you now. So let me demonstrate to you now the full range of motion capabilities of the platform. What I'll do first of all is put the device into uh, its online state. So at the moment you can see hopefully that it's reading uh, offline on top row, 100% uh, which is the gain control, the range of motion and filtering um, uh, that the that this handheld device and the uh, the controller inside the rig will uh, adjust if needed to reduce or, or grow the, the range of motion. And you see here you've got four, uh, what am I talking about, four, six R's on the on the right hand side, uh, each one representing the individual servo motors on the rig. And what that's saying is that all six motors are ready. If one of those was saying P, it would mean it's in a parked position. Uh, if there's an exclamation mark, it means that it's uh, basically, you know, coming online. It's 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 doing something uh, other than uh, preparing to be in a in a ready state. So if I flip up the uh, the switch there to bring it into an online status, you see it goes from standby to wait data because now it's waiting to receive instructions from. Uh, from the PC and the USB channels. So let me just jump onto the, the dashboard application and show you hopefully the full range of motion. All right, so with the dashboard app now, I'm going to control each, indiv each of the six individual uh, ranges or freedoms of motion. We'll start off with pitch. So with the front of the rig being on the left hand side by the by the lights in the video, we're now at the the lowest, the, 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 the down level of pitch at its maximum setting and then moving to the upwards vertical pitch in its uh, in its greatest position. Centre that. Next we'll take a look at roll. Here you can see the full range of roll motion. Next we'll take a look at your so it's spinning around the central axis there. It's quite a, an impressive range of your motion there in my opinion. And uh, the fourth degree of freedom, heave, so the up and down motion. Yeah, it's quite a, again, quite a, a good range of movement there. Imagine it's something like uh, three to four hundred uh, millimeters. Uh, surge now, the feeling of braking and acceleration forwards and backwards. And lastly, sway, the side to side motion. Right, so that's the full range of motion uh, of the rig. All right, what I'd like to do now is give you a quick demonstration as to the strength and the power of this motion platform. In some of my earlier videos, I've made reference to the this platform being akin to a Meccano set. Of course, it's so much stronger and, and you know more powerful than than that. But it's something that's difficult to get across on on camera. So let's give that a go now. What I'm going to do is uh, is send a some telemetry data to make the motion platform go up and down. It's known as a, a loop. It's basically a sine wave 
that is translating into instructions to raise and, and lower the rig. And I'm using a piece of software called Fly PC Mover to, to do that. So let me get that connected now. Let me get just a, a simple up and down range of motion. So let's see how it copes with my body weight. I think you'll agree that has not budged an inch, as the saying goes. It is with ease moving me up and down on the platform. Very good, very nice. Right, let's get down before I end up going through the ceiling. Right, that's enough of that. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I found it fun. And next up, I think we're going to be looking at the construction of the cockpit for the rig. So thank you for watching and see you on the next video.